this body of water is the internet. Actually, this body of water is. Sort of. Over 97% of all internet traffic is transmitted through a network of cables under the ocean. These cables send your data at 671 million miles per hour. That's the speed of light. Oh, and it's all done through a strand of fiber that's the diameter of a human hair. We'll discuss how light waves make these cables different than satellites, their speed and size, where to find a map of their locations, and since they're in the water, do sharks attack them? Subscribe, you're watching Dev Update. How do you send 64 terabits of data every second from New York City to Paris? Well, you could try constantly delivering hard drives on a plane, but that definitely won't work. So we use satellites and subsea cables. The submarine communications cable, also known as the subsea cable, is just that. A cable that runs on the ocean floor across thousands of miles from landing site to landing site. Okay, so what's a landing site? Well, a landing site is just where the cable lands after coming in from the ocean. So it could be a beach or somewhere similar. So where are these cables? Well, these cables go everywhere from South Korea to Singapore or even Australia to New Zealand. There are more than 500 subsea cables in use today. You can view them all at submarinecablemap.com. Equinix serves as an interconnection partner in more than 50 of these subsea cable projects, all making it possible for you to receive this video, deploy a new server on Equinix Metal, or message your barber that they ruined your haircut. Let's look into one of these cables of the ocean. The year was 2016, and Florida needed to be connected to Brazil. Enter the Monet cable. This cable is over 6,200 miles long. It has a capacity of 64 terabits per second and is operated by four telecommunications companies, Google, Algar Telecom, Angola Cables, and Antel. Wait, so where does Equinix come in here? Well, Equinix provided the cable's U.S. landing station at our MI3 International Business Exchange Data Center in Boca Raton, Florida. At that time in 2016, Equinix had several submarine cable projects. I'll list them here. The first ocean cable ever installed was in 1850, and it wasn't for the internet. Instead, it was for transmitting telegraphs between England and France. But the first subsea cable to directly land in a data center was the Monet project in 2016. So that's 166 years later when Equinix created a new architecture for this project, and the pop to pop model was born. You can see the massive size of these ships, carrying the cable spools, tools, and everything. So you must be thinking, why spend all that time and resources to lay cable down onto the ocean floor rather than just send the data overseas using satellites? Well, for a multitude of reasons. One, subsea cables are more secure because you can't intercept a beam of light. In terms of security within the ocean, the cables are also secure from extreme weather patterns, sharks, ships, and pollution. Surprisingly, shark bites aren't a big concern with these cables because the cables are dug into the ground, protected from marine life. So sharks don't eat these cables because they can't. A bigger factor would be corrosion from the unforgiving saltwater, but that's taken care of too because of the cable's external high-density polyethylene jackets, or HDPE. Two. Submarine cables are faster because the data travels through glass fiber rather than through the air. The wire transmits pulses of light using refraction, which redirects or bends the light waves using fiber technology. The cable is made up of a transparent material, in this case glass, which is what causes those light waves to bend. So if the light bends, then what causes the light to not escape from within the cable? Well, the cladding prevents light from leaking outside of the strand and bends the light back towards the core. So the speed of this fiber will always be faster than electrons. 
To give you a sense of the speed, the cables can transmit 64 terabits every second, enough to store 2 million four minute MP3 files. That's 15 years of uninterrupted music every single second. Three, they're cleaner because you avoid the real threat of space junk. For example, if a low Earth orbit satellite breaks up into hundreds of pieces in space, then that trash is up there forever because it's almost impossible to recapture and clean up. As this article mentions, about 15% of all satellite launches fail. So space junk is a very real problem. These ocean cables allow for the universal low latency that is needed for things like esports, 4K video streaming, and artificial intelligence. While subsea cables are futuristic, as mentioned earlier, they've actually been around for over 150 years, since they were used to send telegrams across the pond. We'll cover that in another episode, because it's fascinating. I mentioned the Monet cable earlier, but another subsea cable is for the transatlantic communications. It's called the Amity cable, and it connects the United States with the UK and France. In spite of offering 10x more capacity than older cable systems, Amity uses half the energy. It's really impressive. If this all sounds futuristic, then you'll love Alex Vaxmonsky's article, The Future of Subsea Cables. I'll add a link to it in the video description below. For most of its journey along the ocean floor, a telecommunications cable is about as wide as a garden hose. Even crazier, most of the cable's thickness is for insulation to protect that tiny strand of fiber that is only the width of a human hair. Here's the cable's side, and here's the cable's inside. Notice that white dot in the middle. That's the fiber that sends all of this data. This garden hose under the sea is carefully routed to avoid hazards that could damage them, such as earthquakes and underwater landslides. To minimize any accidental damage that may occur in shallow waters, for example, fishing or anchoring, then these cables must be buried below the ocean floor. There are over 750,000 miles of subsea cables needed to create the internet's infrastructure and keep up with the demand. However, except one place, Antarctica. That's the only continent that needs to use satellites instead of subsea cables. So why is Antarctica all alone here? It's because the cold weather and the ice glaciers have made it difficult to install these cables in the ocean. So what's your favorite fact about these subsea cables? Let us know in the comments below. Subscribe for cool dev update videos like this and go to deploy.equinix.com and use coupon code DEPLOYNOW to get started on Equinix Metal. I'll add all the show links in the video description below.